Thank you. Oh, that's okay. You don't have to applaud. It's all right. Uh, I'm, I am uh, sort of like being dragged out as a fossil so people can see what it might have looked like, kind of. Uh, now you got me thinking about my involvement in the very early Asian American movement. Now there are several different legends about how the Asian American movement started. And you can pick one if you like. They all start around 1968, 69. Mm -hmm. My own personal story was I had just come in off the road by 1970. I had been working in bands and I was very much disappointed in that scene because it was just a lust for money and power and I felt kind of uh, empty about that. I retired to uh, bartending, which I thought at the time was much more satisfying for a number of different reasons, not the least of which immense amounts of alcohol, which allowed me to indulge myself for weeks at a time in a sort of hazy state of uh, non compus mentis. But one afternoon I was working in the bar and a guy came in, a young Asian American guy, and he said, this is a, a bar where a lot of musicians hang out, huh? I said, yeah, sure. He says, any Asian musicians hang out here? And I had to think for a second, because this was a new term to me, <laughs> right? He said, Asian, I said, oh, connection, yeah, yeah. Uh, I play a little. He said, well, listen, you know, if you want, we're having this conference at Pace College. It was 1970. We're having a conference at Pace College. And uh, if you want, bring your, bring your ax, man, and play. So I said, sure, great, and he gave me a flyer. So the first thing I thought, of course, was, hmm, Conference at a college, there's going to be girls. <laughs> of course, right? So I said, where's my guitar? Here it is, right here, right? So I said, oh, wow, this is going to be great. <laughs> so um, I got an opportunity. I got there early so I could, like, banter and talk to people, especially the girls. And uh, I started to hear stuff I had never heard before. The people were tossing around this phrase, Asian American. Up until then, I had been an Oriental, didn't think much about it. But now all of a sudden I began to realize, oh, okay, we're Asian. I could see that. And so it, it really piqued my interest. And uh, something happened, which is I heard this couple, Joanne and Chris, or Chris and Joanne, and they were singing. They sang a song, it sounded like this. We are the children of the migrant worker. We are the offspring of the concentration camp. Sons and daughters of the railroad builders who will leave their stamp on America. Spring of the Japanese gardener, born and raised in a laundry room. We are the children of the migrant workers who will leave their stamp on America. Sing a song for ourselves. What have we got to lose? Sing a song for ourselves. You know we got the right to choose. We got the right to choose. Well, this stunned me because I'm thinking, wow, this is a song about us. I've never heard anything like this before. This is astounding. So I said, well, first thing, I have to check out every one of the groups that was there. Everybody had their flyers out. So I went and I investigated every single group and I found all kinds of interesting things happening. There was Asian American theater, Asian American writers. There were Asian American uh, people who were involved in political activism, which interests me a great deal. I said, is this it? Could this be it? Is this what I'm looking for? And there was this, this couple, uh, Chris and Joanne. Now at the end of the concert, uh, as always, the concerts always run late. And of course, you know, if you work in a college, if the concert runs late, it closes on the dot. The college has to close because the maintenance guys, the tech you know, guys, they fin if it's 11 o'clock, it's 11 o'clock, that's it, the lights go out. So there wasn't any time left. So uh, I said, well, you, got, you guys go ahead. You know, I, uh, I'm still digesting this, basically. But uh, the woman said, no, 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 join us. You know, we'll all play together. So we did. So the first time I had a chance to hear Nobuko and Chris was the first time I played with them. First time I played with them was the first time I heard them. I said, oh, this is interesting. And then Nobuko said, you know, we're going to be someplace else next week. Why don't you come and join us? Well, I didn't realize at the time this was going to lead to a couple of years of playing and singing. <laughs> and it, it satisfied me a great deal because now I could say truly, well, this, this, this thing has no money involved in it whatsoever. Still doesn't. And I said, uh, so it's pure. You know, I could, I could get behind this because I'm, I'm coming from being burnt out, you know, from, from dealing with rock and roll and all this other stuff. So I joined them and we sang, we played, we went around the country, and 
the issue was there was low hanging fruit really it was an opportunity because there were many groups starting to grow in different places that were looking for a voice looking for an image and that included literature theater other things and there were people rising up to meet that need because many of the asian americans here's something that people don't uh, remember too often many of the asian, asian americans who were originally involved had been around uh, actually in civil rights movement myself included um, it's uh, a fact that when uh, we went on the uh, march on washington in 1963 there was about 250,000 people on that march, that's what they estimated. Well, people tend to forget that was more than there was the number of Chinese in this country at that time in 1963. I wasn't at Woodstock, but they say also uh, that Woodstock was the biggest event of that time in 1969. Well, you could have taken every Chinese person in this country, put them at Woodstock, and there would have been room left over. <laughs> So this is a big factor in the early days. There were very, very few of us here. There still isn't very many of us here now. Uh, if you follow the news recently, you'll find out there's more Puerto Ricans in this country than there are Chinese people. There are more Mormons in this country than there are Chinese people. The number of Asians in general is very, very small. And at this point, if I uh, am correct, the number of people of mixed heritage outnumber the number of Asians who are in this country. So we're still sitting in a very interesting situation, not the least of which is, which I had to deal with over 12 years working at the Chinese Historical Society. Over 90% of the Chinese people in this country have arrived or were born after 1979. So that means anything that happened before that, they don't know, or they only know it in the, in the vaguest terms as a kind of historical curiosity, see anecdote. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, about a month and something ago, I normally lecture to the city guides for San Francisco. They uh, offer free guided tours of San Francisco and I don't mind doing it for them because each one of those guides is going to be talking to thousands of people over the course of a year or so. So it's really crucial that they have accurate information about the history of Chinatown, the history of the Chinese in California. I completed the lecture and asked does anybody have any questions and a Chinese American woman about 32 raised her hand and she said are you saying that Chinese people had to live in Chinatown? <laughs> I said, yes. <laughs> That's what had happened. And we were not allowed at one time to become American citizens by virtue of our race. We were not allowed to marry American citizens. Well, actually, we could marry American citizens. A national Chinese could marry an American citizen, but she would automatically lose her citizenship. There was all these different things that happened. <clears throat> that most people now have completely forgotten about or don't know about. Now, I can't say that it, I blame Asian Americans in general. It has to do with the whole nature of the teaching of history in this country. One more anecdote to illustrate that. Several years ago uh, at the museum, the Chinese uh, Historical Society, I was giving a guided tour to a group of uh, high school students. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, to make sure that they're listening, I ask a question. We began to talk about the building of the Transcontinental Railroad. I said it started originally actually in 61. The plans were begun. Lincoln was ready to sign uh, for it to begin. But something happened between 61 and 62 that brought everything to a stop in the United States. And they all looked at me blankly. So I said, I'll give you a clue. <laughs> The Yankees is coming! The Yankees is coming! <laughs> so one young man, Chinese-American, raised his hand and he said, I think I know. I said, what? He said, they invented baseball. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. 